Hello, this is John Buck back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. And in this video, we're going to talk about using feedback to stabilize an unstable system. This is an example that follows on the main feedback video. So if you haven't already watched the, the original main video on feedback that I recorded, uh, go back and watch that first and then come back to this because it's an example of the third common application of feedback. Uh, as I already mentioned in that video, two of them are for you know dealing with erratic components, sort of stabilizing erratic components, or not stabilizing in the sense of stability, but, but removing sensitivity to erratic components and also creating inverse systems. But the third important thing is using feedback, we can stabilize systems, which again Laplace transform is well suited for because unlike the Fourier transform, Laplace unstable systems do still have a Laplace transform. So for example, let's consider this system for our feed forward system, H of S, that's 3 over s plus 5. If we look at this system, it has a pole at s equals 5 because that's the root of the denominator. And so if we go ahead and draw the pole 0 diagram for this, and our real and imaginary axis here is our pole. I'm going to draw this dashed line here. And I want you to take a moment, pause the video, and think about, for this causal system, where would the region of convergence be? OK, now that you're back, Right. For a causal system, it's a right-sided system, so the region of convergence runs to the right of the, the rightmost pole. So here the rightmost pole, there's only one pole, it's at 5, and the region of convergence would be this region I'm shading with blue. And this tells us the system isn't stable because the imaginary axis over here, right, here's our imaginary axis, it's not in the region of convergence. And so we'd like to see, in this example, we're going to see how applying negative feedback can change the overall system function so that if this, were, if this H of S were some component we had to use in a system for some other reason, we could apply this feedback around it and make it stable if we have the right gain. So let's draw our feedback system, in our feedback uh, layout in here, our feedback connection. So here's our feedback system. This is the the, the H of S, our feed forward branch that we want to stabilize. So let's just remind ourselves this is our H of S. And our feedback in this system is just going to be a, a constant thing. So if this was a circuit, it might just be a resistive divider. <clears throat> and so we know the overall formula for closed loop we already saw earlier in the previous lecture. The closed loop gain from the previous video is h of s over 1 plus g of s h of s. So if we put in h of s and g of s just as our k here, we get a closed loop gain that looks like this, 3 over s minus 5 and 1 plus k times 3 over s minus 5. So to simplify this and understand, uh, well, let me pause for a moment. Our big picture now is to figure out what values of k will make the system overall system stable so that the new system going from x to y with the closed loop has the poles in the left half plane. And so to do that, we need to figure out how the location of the pole depends on the value of k. And so our first step to doing that is to multiply the numerator and denominator by s minus 5 to simplify it some. And I'm also going to uh, move the page up a bit to give us some more room to work here. And so when we do that and simplify, I get 3, the s minus 5s in the numerator cancel here. Let me actually show my cancellations to make it clear. So this s minus 5 cancels here. It cancels here, but leaves me another 1 s minus 5 in front. So I get 3 over s minus 5 plus 3k here. And so if I look at this, now the poles occur when the denominator is 0. So the new poles are at the values of s is equal to 5 minus 3k. And so to be stable, we need the poles in the left half plane or equivalently, that the real part of the pole has to be less than 0. Well, in this case, the pole is still real. And so we need 5 minus 3 times capital K to be less than 0. So if I solve for that, that tells me I need uh, 5 to be less than 3K. So if I solve, divide both sides by... 3, I get k must be greater than 5 thirds. So as long as I have a gain of 5 thirds or more in the feedback path, the, uh, the pole will be uh, in the negative axis, and, and more will only help, right? It will make it more, more stable. Well, more will, will make it 
more gain will make it more stable um, in the sense of it will move the pole further and further onto the left half plane. So for example, if I had k equals 2, this whole thing will become s plus 1 in the denominator, so the pole would be at minus 1. So that's just a, a quick, simple example. We can do it for higher order systems too, and we'll get a chance to practice that in class on one of the class problems. But again, it's such an important idea that many times we have a physical, practical system we're using for some reason. Uh, maybe it's a, a control system in a car or an airplane, and it's not actually stable, but it has other features we want, and we'll end up using feedback to make it stable instead. Okay, so that's all for this time. Just a, a short example like this, but I'll stop the video here. And I will see you next time.